Um, this was a talk called Better Living Through Science Fiction that I gave at MacTech last year and didn't actually end up getting recorded. So we're going to hijack some memes from science fiction and use them to hack your wetware. Uh, this is just a quick list of the various works that I have cited in here. So Decent Smattering of Star Trek, A Little Bit of Star Wars, Hitchhiker's Guide, Dune, Aliens, The Dark Tower by Stephen King, Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, The Mars Books by Kim Stanley Robinson, and Lord of Light by Roger Zelazny, which, if you did not know, is the book that they based the plotline of Argo off of um, for the fake movie that was used in Argo to get the people out of Iran. Um, so themes. Useful maxims, three handy laws that are not from Asimov, acceptance, knowing yourself, and the issue of other mime, minds, bleh, sorry. Um, so unusable memes. 42. I cannot think of a good way to turn 42 into something that will be useful. Also, revenge is a dish best served cold, ancient Klingon proverb. Don't go the revenge route. It does not work well unless you really, really want to burn your bridges and never work in tech again. Useful maxisms, the three laws, Heinlein's razor, Clark's third law, and Whedon's law, which we already went over a bit. So Heinlein's razor is a variation of Hanlon's razor, never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity, but don't rule out malice. There will be people who will intentionally subvert you, but usually it's just they have no idea what they're doing. Clark's third law, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Can you imagine if someone had come back in time 10 years ago and showed us an iPhone and an Apple Watch? We would have thought that they were insane. Whedon's Law, don't be a dick. Acceptance. Resistance is futile. Change is coming. Things will not be the same. There is no way out. Accept the fact that we are on a yearly cycle of new operating systems. Accept the fact that everything is changing. Accept the fact that a whole bunch of ports are probably going to disappear sometime in the future. Moving over to Stephen King, the world has moved on. We don't have floppy drives anymore. We don't even have optical drives at this point. Everything is changing, and it will just keep going. And the spice must flow from Dune. Things have to keep going. Data has to keep going. Life has to keep moving on. Do not be the reason why the spice is not getting off of Arrakis. And Shikata Ganai, which is from the initial Japanese settlers of Mars. Um, this means there is no other way. Sometimes you just have to step it up, pull up your boots, and kick some butt. Know yourself. Light is the left hand of darkness, and darkness is the right hand of light. This is from the planet Gethin, um, from The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. Everything has two sides, or more than that. There is always good with the bad. There is always bad with the good. Accept it and be okay with it. And this is the opening paragraph from Lord of Light. His followers called him Mahatma San and said he was a god. He preferred to drop the Maha and the Atman, however, and called himself Sam. He never claimed to be a god, but then he never claimed not to be a god. Circumstances being what they were, neither admission could be of any benefit. If you have not read Lord of Light, it is one of the most masterful and beautiful works of science fiction. It's also very hard to get a hold of because you can't actually get it as an ebook. It tells the story of the Buddha on a foreign planet that is mostly run by people who are following along in a very Hindu culture. It is fascinating. There are also weird energy beings that are called Rakasha, and there are lizards instead of horses. The Litany Against Fear, which if Rich Trouden was here, I would have him shove his hand in a box and pretend to put him through the Gam Jabbar and make you all recite this. Have something you can use like the Litany Against Fear to keep yourself calm. Any sort of a mantra that you can pick up will help. The Litany is pretty darn good. It's not bad. It's a little bit long. It's a little bit wordy. You can cut it down to... I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will pass, permit to pass over and through me. When it is gone, then I will turn the inner eye and see his path, blah, blah, blah. Wherever you want to cut it off, feel free to. Also, do or do not, there is no try. You got to get stuff done. There's just no other way around it. Just a whisper, I hear it in my ghost from Major Kusanagi in Ghost in the Shell. Trust your instincts. They are usually pretty good. You can usually tell when things are going sideways. Uh, 
let's see. Uh, for anyone who watched the Chronicles of Riddick, you keep what you kill. <laughs> Anything you touch will probably end up under your control. So if you accidentally step outside of your bounds at work and take a project from another team, it will probably wind up yours. <laughs> If you have the bravery or foolishness to say, hey, you know, the Mac documentation at work really needs some help, you will probably end up entirely responsible for it. Understand, you will keep what you kill. Once you touch it, it's yours. Other minds, don't panic. I'm sure this has become a common refrain because how can it not be? Um, just take two steps back, take a couple deep breaths, there is no reason to panic. Once things are broken, once things are gone, once that file's been accidentally deleted, there's not much more you can do. If it's lost files, immediately shut down the computer so you stop writing over them. Hope that you can get the data off. If you can't, is what it is, get better backup software. All things serve the beam. This is another one from Stephen King. Uh, everything serves a greater purpose. Everything serves the bottom line of wherever you're working or whoever you're working for. Remember who your customer is at all times. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. With one exceptional caveat, do not become a martyr because of Spock. The Vulcans are not right in that regard. There is no reason for you to be the one stuck ejecting the warp core, dying and being reborn on the Genesis planet. Don't do that to yourself. Um, breathe deep, seek peace from Dinotopia, which I don't know if anyone still remembers Dinotopia. Um, it was cute and I loved it when I was little, but being able to take back and take a deep breath and calm down and find your center before you interact with folks will make your life and their lives better. Um, I can't really come up with a cone from this. The Belonging Kind is a short story by William Gibson and John Sterling. It's in his collection, Burning, or Gibson's collection, Burning Chrome. It is about creatures that adapt and thrive in whatever environment they're in. They're also interesting because they have pockets that produce money in their legs and they survive solely on alcohol and they sleep on coat hangers. But it's a fascinating story and learning to adapt and fit in as well as them is not a bad goal to have. The somebody else's problem filled for anyone who got into the deeper cuts of the Hitchhiker's Guide series. The somebody else's problem filled is something that runs on a little tiny setup about this big and can run off of a double A battery. And all it involves is painting something pink and turning on the little engine and it disappears out of sight, out of mind. Find a way to generate your own somebody else's problem filled so you don't keep what you kill. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Oh, and roughly, and the inestimable aliens. Sometimes you just have to nuke and pave. There is no other way around it. Accept it, even if it's your own laptop. Siri? No, shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. That was worthless. <laughs> Okay, Darmok. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Shaka when the walls fell. Temba his arms wide. Sokoth his eyes uncovered. This is from the episode Darmok on Star Trek The Next Generation when Captain Picard encounters a species of aliens who can only speak in metaphors. It is a fabulous episode if you haven't watched it. This is what you sound like if you start speaking in too much jargon and meme speak. Coming up and going, Temba, his arms wide, is basically saying woot. <laughs> Other folks may understand what you're saying when you say woot. Try and do that to grandma. Grandma's probably not going to get it. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful episode. It makes you rethink how you see language. I highly recommend watching it if you haven't. And I will now finish out with Live Long and Prosper. And... So congratulations, two for the price of one talk. And we still have another 20 minutes left, so if folks have questions on science fiction, feel free, or you can be dismissed now, whatever you prefer. Feel free to escape now while you can. <laughs> go, go, you're, oh, yes. I have a quick question. Um, 
question. Yes. How did you get here? What is your background? What is oh. your college? What did you major in? <sighs> Um, so it started long, long ago in the before times when my parents decided to purchase a Performa from Sears back in 1994. I may have bonded with that computer more closely than I bonded with any people or animals as a child. So I kind of got hooked into Macs at a very, very early age. And I've been playing with them for the last almost 21 years now. Um, I tried everything I possibly could before I finally settled in tech because I knew how terrifying other parts of the community were and I did not want to deal with the male dominated world necessarily. Um, so I've got a degree in liberal arts in arts and letters, which is basically I couldn't make up my mind. So I have equal understanding of graphic design, German philosophy, German language and literature. <laughs> Um, so it has some great benefits. Like I can absolutely write wonderful documentation and I can make pretty slides. Um, and I ended up getting a job at a university help desk and I kind of got scouted for working for the Mac client systems administration team and everything else is history. I started working as a sysadmin and then kept switching on to new sysadmin roles. Um, was brave enough last year to submit two talks, both of which got picked up for this conference, um, which was both exciting and terrifying because suddenly everyone could put a name to my face. I went from 40 followers on Twitter that year to about 200. I'm getting close to 500 now. I've decided to admin Slack. Um, I am redlining and it's fun. <laughs> so much stress. It's not even terrifying at all, really, I swear. <laughs> Um, was that, did I answer all of the, yeah. okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anybody else questions? Wishing to escape? Go, you're free, run away.